a secondary example of being able to use the rational zeros theorem to be able to find the zeros of a polynomial function, we have this x cubed plus 7x squared plus 11x minus 3. Um, and so this one's actually a little bit easier to find the rational zeros of. Um, notice that we have p is equal to negative 3. Right? And then we have q is going to be equal to 1. And so we know the factors of negative three, that's easy. That's plus minus one, plus minus three. And then the factors of one are plus minus one. And so when we take and divide P and Q, that means we're just going to get these two, these four values, excuse me, for um, the rational, the possible rational zeros. And so for part A, where we're asked to find the possible rational zeros, Um, that's going to be just plus minus one and plus minus three. So now what we do is we just go ahead and see which of those three values or full values, excuse me, is going to make a zero out of G. Okay. So for part B, now, like you said, what I always do is I start with the low hanging fruit. Let's start with one. And that's just going to be one cube plus seven times one square plus 11 times one minus three. Um, and unfortunately, I think that's going to give us 18 or maybe 15. So that's going to be 1 and 7 is 8. 8 and 11 is going to be 19. 19 minus 3 is 16, okay, which is clearly not equal to 0. Okay, so 1 doesn't work. Let's try negative 1. Okay, might as well. So we have negative 1 cubed plus 7 times negative 1 squared plus 11 times negative one minus three. And I don't think this one's going to work either, all right? Because we're going to get negative one plus seven minus 11 minus three, all right? Um, and it looks like that's going to turn into negative seven. So that's going to be six, six minus 11 is negative five. Negative five minus eight is going to give us negative eight, I think. Let me check one more time. Just because I'm doing this in my head, yeah, it should be negative eight. Okay. Um, either way, it's not equal to zero. All right. So, um, and I don't think three is going to work because if we plug three in, we're going to start getting bigger numbers. All right. So finally, let's try negative three. All right. Just to see if that works. And again, this is tedious, but it's not that difficult. Okay. So we get negative three to the third plus seven times negative three squared plus 11 times negative three minus three. Okay. So that's gonna be negative 27. Seven times nine is gonna be 63 minus 33 minus three. Right. Um, and it looks like if we combine these, that's gonna be 30. If we combine these, that's gonna be negative 30. And so finally we get a zero out of this. Okay, so now remember that means two things, okay? Number one, it means that x equals negative three is a zero, okay, which is good. So this is one of our solutions right away. But also that means x plus three is a factor, okay? So at the end, when we do our polynomial division, x plus three is going to be one of those two factors. Okay? So now let's go ahead and do our synthetic division, okay? So we're just going to take this polynomial and put it on the inside. And we have our negative three on the outside. So we have negative three. And then we have one, seven, 11, and negative three, I believe. Let me just verify that one, seven, 11, negative three. Okay. And so we drop the one down, we get negative three. That's four. This becomes negative 12, which is negative one. Three, negative three times negative one is three, and that's zero, and that's good. Okay. If that wasn't the case, then that would mean that we've done something wrong. So that means that the remain the quotient is going to be x squared plus 4x minus 1. And that's one of the factors. The other factor is going to be x plus 3. And so now we can factor this polynomial, g of x, into x plus 3 quantity x squared plus 4x minus 1. All right. Now, we usually would try to factor this. Okay, but unfortunately, this quadratic is prime. Okay, so we can't factor it. 
So what that means is we're going to have to use the quadratic formula to be able to get our other zeros. Okay, And that's not a big deal. Um, the whole purpose of this is to get down to a quadratic, okay, if one exists. okay. Um, and then once we get to a quadratic, we can just use our formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So x is going to be the opposite of b, which is negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. And then we're going to divide that by 2a, or 2 times 1. Um, simplifying this, we end up with negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 4 divided by 2. And then this just turns into the square root of 20. So we have negative 4 plus or minus root 20 over 2. All right, that should be a 2. Sorry about that. Um, and we know that 20 contains a factor of 4 within it. So that radical can be simplified a little bit. So we're going to take the square root of 20 as root 4 times 5 or root 4 times root 5 or 2 roots of 5. All right. So um, that means that we get negative 4 plus or minus 2 roots of 5 over 2. And finally, what we can do is we can divide both of the, um, both of the terms there by 2. And so that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, so those are our, those are our other two zeros. Okay, now remember, going all the way back up here, the degree of this polynomial is 3. And remember, whatever the degree is, that's how many zeros we have. Okay, some of them might have a multiplicity of more than 1. Okay, so we might have like 2 repeated a couple times or something like that. But in this example, we don't. Okay? So for our solution, okay, so this is part D. Okay? Um, remember that we had x equals negative 3 was one of the solutions. A second solution is negative 2 plus root 5. Okay? And notice that this is an irrational 0. Okay? Um, if we go all the way back up to the beginning, remember plus minus 1 and plus minus 3, those were possible rational zeros. Um, there's no way for us to be able to list all the possible irrational zeros, okay? The third root is the other irrational zero, negative 2 minus root 5. All right, now, here's a way to check. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the graph of the function, and we're going to see if these two are zeros of the function, okay? So we just go into our calculator. Um, we're going to graph. Now, remember, we had x cubed plus... I think it was 7x squared, and then plus 11x, and then minus 3, I think. Okay, um, And so if we remember, one of the zeros that we had was negative 3, 0. Okay? So if we go back to what we did before, um, negative 3, 0 was a 0. Um, another 0 is negative 2 minus the square root of 5, okay? comma 0. And I want you to notice that that perfectly fits right here on the axis and on the function. So it's very likely that that's, a rat, that's going to be one of our solutions. In fact, it is one of our solutions. The other solution, you recall, was negative 2 plus root 5. All right, so if I go over here and change this to a plus, and then we just label it, there we go. Okay, that's our, our third solution. Remember, the degree of the polynomial is 3, so there are 1, 2, three solutions, okay? And again, some of them might be repeated or might have a multiplicity greater than one, okay? So that's just a way to check to make sure that your answers make sense, okay? Um, one last comment that this is also an irrational zero as well, okay? And this is one of our rational zeros. Um, anytime you have a radical that doesn't completely simplify, we get an irrational number, okay? So at least if there's nothing in the denominator as well, okay? All right, so that's a second example. And hopefully in the final example, um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to step up the degree of this. And we might have to do our division a few times. OK, so um, but the process will still be the same. It's just going to take a little bit longer for us to be able to find those zeros of the polynomial function.